What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I got another video for you, but this one is going to be about a stock that I never really thought that I would cover. The ticker symbol for this stock is ELY, and the company is known as Callaway Golf. Yes, this is pretty much a golfing company. What Callaway Golf does is they sell golfing equipment, primarily golf clubs, but they also sell golfing apparel or accessories. Now, the reason why I didn't really think I'd make a video like this or even look at a golfing company as an investment is because I don't go golfing. And quite frankly, I don't really care about golfing. But the one time I've ever went golfing was when I went to go play top golf. Now, ironically, that's the actual opportunity here. So the only reason I'm talking about Callaway Golf, ticker symbol ELY, is because in late October, there were talks about now Callaway Golf going ahead and acquiring Top Golf. Now, this is actually a pretty huge opportunity, and that's why I'm here making this video. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about why this is actually a big opportunity. And then in the second half of this video, just like every other video I make, we're going to talk about the risks. So to every investment, you're going to have the upside, but as well as the risks. And everybody should know both sides before deciding if they should or should not make the investment. So with that being said, let's talk about the upside first and then stick around for the second half of the video where we're going to go over our biggest risks and then you can decide on whether or not you should make the investment. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So Callaway Golf is looking to acquire Top Golf, and the reason why this is such a big deal is because Callaway Golf and pretty much the golfing industry in general has been in pretty much a stagnant line. There hasn't really been much growth for the golfing industry, and Callaway Golf is pretty much one of the main stocks here that haven't really experienced any boost in stock price. Now. The reason why there's an opportunity here is because by acquiring Top Golf, Callaway Golf is actually able to expand their market. So, my biggest problem with any golfing stock or the golfing industry in general is because the market isn't that big. Whenever you invest in a stock, you typically want to invest in stocks that have one, a big market, but two, a growing market. So, if the stock is in both a huge and growing market, that's probably a good growth stock to look into. Golf doesn't necessarily fit that bill, but with this acquisition going forward, Callaway Golf can actually now become a growth stock. And that's where you could probably make some return on your money. So let's go back to that first part I said real quick. So in 2019, the golfing equipment market was about $6.65 billion. So that's the whole size of that entire market which is the market that Callaway Golf is currently in. So now what you have is you have a pretty limited sized market. And you also have a company that's not growing too fast in that market. So that's essentially the problem we have here now. But the solution here is the acquisition with Top Golf, which is going to allow Callaway Golf to grow even faster. So if you think about this for a second and what I was saying earlier in the intro of the video, I don't know too many people who are very experienced and very avid golfers but i do know tons of people younger people who although they're not experienced in golf and they could care less about golf they will go to top golfing events with some of their friends and like i said earlier i have done that in the past as well the reason why this speaks to me is because i don't really care about golf but i was willing to go top golf so what that says is for me at least in my perspective is this is such a great acquisition for Callaway Golf because they're tapping into a whole new audience. You have a much younger market and pretty much people of all types of backgrounds will will eventually get in Top Golf or they will try it out at one point in time or another. So going forward, this can actually increase the growth rate for Callaway Golf. And this increase in growth rate might be the solution to Callaway Golf's problem. And if you're in the golf, golfing industry, I do think this is just a brilliant acquisition in general. You have an industry that's not necessarily growing too fast. And if you look at Callaway Golf stock in particular, the stock has not grown at all over the past few years. There have been some fluctuations, but there hasn't been too much growth in the stock price, not to mention the industry in general. It's pretty stagnant. But when you look at Top Golf, there's been a crazy amount of growth and the numbers are there to back it up. So 
Unlike Callaway Golf, if you look at Top Golf since 2017, we're able to increase at an average compounded rate of 30%, which is insane. That's really all the evidence you need to show you that Top Golf is actually a fast growing event and it's actually able to generate some profit for Callaway Golf going forward. And you can see that's why they made the acquisition. It really does make sense on all levels. But now, just like all my other videos, with this stock, we still have to get into the risks. And there's a couple big risks here. The first risk being the debt and profitability related to this acquisition. So in the last couple weeks of October, when the acquisition was announced, we noticed that top uh, Callaway Golf's shareholders didn't really agree with this, this acquisition. So ELY stock dropped over 20% towards the latter half of October. The reason why ELY shareholders didn't necessarily agree with this acquisition, and this also ties into the risk that we have here, is because of the profitability relative to the debt that Callaway Golf is taking on. So the risk here is to make this acquisition, Callaway Golf has to take on $550 million worth of debt, which is part one. And then the next part is that the current ELY stockholders are going to pretty much get their shares diluted. So since this deal is going to be a stock deal, in order to purchase Top Golf, Callaway, Callaway Golf is going to end up giving shares of ELY stock to Top Golf shareholders. So what that's going to do for current ELY shareholders is that's going to dilute their percentage of ownership. What that pretty much means is and I've explained this in my previous videos, but if you could think of this whole company ELY or Callaway Golf as a pie, well, the stockholders today that own ELY are pretty much going to get a smaller piece of the pie because Callaway Golf is giving out more shares now to Top Golf shareholders. So they're pretty much going to own less of the company and their shares are going to be less profitable. That's the first piece. Now, the second piece is the debt that um, Callaway Golf is going to take on as a part of this acquisition. So it was part stock and, part, and, and as the company go ahead and make this acquisition, they're going to take on $550 million in debt. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing and it's not problematic at all. If you're using that debt to actually acquire a company that's very profitable. In this case, the reason why the ELY shareholders don't necessarily agree with it is because they're taking on all that money into debt. They're taking on all that debt, but they're not necessarily getting a company that's extremely profitable right now. So I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where people are looking at Callaway Golf and Top Golf, and they're using kind of like a price to sales valuation in order to say that this stock might be able to make a lot of money. That's not necessarily the case at all. And I would actually, I would go against using any price to sales multiple to look at any of these stocks. Price to sales multiple are more efficient if you use them for companies that are extremely profitable and have high margins. So like companies like technology companies or SaaS companies that don't necessarily have too many costs like operating expenses. I would say you can use uh, price to sales multiples when looking at those companies. But the reason why that's not a great idea for a company like this is because that doesn't really tell you much. You want to look at a company's profitability. So how much money they actually make. Sales is good. It'll tell you that a company is growing. If, if they're able to increase their sales at a high rate, that's great. I mean, it shows you that the company's able to grow. But at the end of the day, what you care about is cash flow. So sales is only one piece of the story. Then the second piece is actually cash flow. Can they turn that sales into cash? Then that's the question. And in order to understand this, you should probably look more at EBITDA. And if you haven't heard that term before, I strongly recommend studying up on it. Whenever you're trying to make an investment, you should have a decent idea of what the company's EBITDA actually looks like. That's more close. That's a more close gauge as to whether or not the company is profitable. So now, Going back to Top Golf's profitability, we're taking on $550 million of debt if we're Callaway Golf, but the profitability isn't that great. The company's making $1 billion of sales, but about $60 million of that is EBITDA. So of that $1 billion, 
you have about 60 billion that's looking like profitability here that's looking like cash that's going to end up going in your pocket and it's not actually all of it is going to be cash but now we're getting too deep into the details you can kind of think of ebitda as profitability for this piece of the conversation so now going back you have 60 million dollars of profitability in 2019 but you're still taking on 550 million dollars of debt so essentially it's the acquisition is going to take a while for it to pay itself off. If you're using, if you're acquiring Top Golf, then it's going to take a while to take the profitability of Top Golf and keep paying that debt down, that five hundred and fifty million dollars worth of debt. And that's where the risk is here: is the company is not essentially that profitable today to make a huge difference in ELY stock price. Now, with that being said. There is a solution and that just pretty much the solution is based on what I was saying earlier in this video. If you're forward thinking here and you're willing to be patient to kind of reap the benefits of this investment, then this actually might be an investment for you. Because although this company isn't necessarily as profitable today and it's not going to make a huge change once this acquisition is done, the, the benefit here comes from the synergies. So the synergies that Callaway Golf is able to get by acquiring Top Golf, and that's what we spent the first part of the video talking about. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sacrifice a bit of investment today. So if you're if you're Callaway Golf, you're going to take on debt and dilute some shareholder ownership today. But going forward tomorrow, you're going to be able to increase if if this all ends up being successful. You can increase your consumer base. And at the same time, expand your market size. So instead of just selling your golf equipment to the typical average golf profile type of person, what you're going to do now is you're going to be able to expand your audience and expand your consumer base. So you're going to start getting into younger demographics and people who aren't necessarily that interested in golf, but are willing to go out with their friends and, and, and play some top golf. So now you're going to get some sales and profitability coming in from a completely different consumer base. And you can also sell your golfing equipment to this new younger consumer base, which is a great idea if you're Callaway Golf. And that's the plan going forward. So it all comes to the timeline here. If you're willing to sit tight and be a long-term investor, then we can see how this investment can be profitable for you. But it's all things to consider as you go forward and decide if you want to invest into the stock. That's really all I have for this video. And if you guys are really interested in this video, maybe I'll make another follow up. That's all I have for now. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Till next time. Peace.